Hello everybody, I'm Dan. Welcome to my Java tutorial series. Throughout my tutorials I'll teach you Java using just Notepad and the command prompt. The order in which my tutorials are organized on both my website at javacjava.com and my YouTube playlist is designed to maximize learning by building on concepts from prior tutorials. This tutorial is about constructor overloading. I'm going to go ahead and pull up my website here, javacjava.com. Go on the pop-out menu and select the Java OOP tutorials. Scroll down to constructor overloading. One of the really cool features of Java is the ability to overload constructors. What is an overloaded constructor, you may ask? Now basically, an overloaded constructor is multiple constructors all with different signatures. The signature consists of the constructor name followed by the parameter list enclosed in parentheses. And it's the parameter list enclosed in parentheses that will change from one overloaded constructor to the next. In this tutorial, I'm going to add in a new instance variable to my box class. The new instance variable will hold a string value that will specify the unit of measurement. This tutorial will build on the box class for my constructors part 4 tutorial. So basically the purpose of this whole tutorial is to say, okay, I want to add functionality to a class that already exists. And let's go ahead and do that down here. Let's highlight our code here. Highlight my code. Hit control C to copy or right click and select copy. Let's move that off site there. Start search, type in CMD. If you're running Windows 7 or earlier, you can go to start run, type in CMD. Type in Java C. And you should see all this stuff scroll by. If you don't, go ahead and watch my tutorial for installing the Java development kit. You want to make sure you get this in, um, installed and configured properly before continuing. CLS to clear the screen, CD space backslash, CD is short for change directory, backslash tells it to go to the root. Then we'll make a directory, MD, Java, and I already have it, but if you don't, it'll create it for you. Let me make another directory, and we're going to call this uh, constructor overloading. CD space, and then I hit the tab key to pull that up. Notepad constructor overloading.java. Constructor overloading.java is going to be our source code file name. Let's go ahead and hit control V to paste that or you could right click and select paste. Okay, let's go ahead and save this out. Um, so we've got this constructor overloading class up here and with the main method entry points. That's where our program is going to start off. And then we've got our box class here too as well. So I'm going to go through kind of line by line on this. We had these already in there. Those are our length, width, and height instance variables. All of them are private. And now I added in the new instance variable string unit of measurement. Okay. Now, in the last tutorial, I told you about the default constructor. And if you create a constructor, you should always include this here too. And that was the first constructor we created. And it just basically set the length, width, and height there. My new constructor here is the same as the first constructor, only I've added in a new parameter now. So this is the signature of that constructor right there. This is the signature of, the, of this constructor here. This is the signature of the default constructor up there. So technically I do have three constructors in here, right? And so um, this one overloads the default constructor and then this one is an overloaded constructor as well. So. Um, and I um, added one more statement in here, unit of measurement, that parameter. I'm setting unit of measurement, the local variable up here, equal to the unit of measurement parameter. And I just uh, took some functionality out of the setter and getter methods here, just to clean this up just a little bit there. But uh, went ahead and that's, those were already in here down to this point. And then I added some new setter and matter, setter and getter methods here for the unit of measurement. The reason why I did that is because you, you have to consider, okay, when we originally created this, uh, this box class, that was the only thing in it there. We didn't even have constructors. So if someone's using that version of your box class you, and you want to give them more functionality without breaking their code, you can just continue on and do a, another setter and another getter method, right? And pretty simple. They just set the uh, unit of measurement with the parameters that are coming in there, and then get unit of measurement returns unit of measurement, whatever that value is. Okay, and then of course our calculate volume method down here. So let's come up here to the constructor overloading class here. And so this is kind of our what our original 
um, thing did without constructors, where we have our setter method, setting our length, setting our height, setting our width, right? And then we're displaying the volume of this um, B reference variable that's referring to this box object. We'll um, invoke the calculate volume method and display that. So we get the string literal, the volume of box B is plus B's volume. Then we learned about constructors and how we could pass in, um, well, these are arguments and they're passed to, in as parameters. So we could set these arguments four, eight, and three right here for this um, box C reference variable, right? And then display this string literal plus C's volume, right? Pretty straightforward there. So now we've got another one here that I just created here in this statement there, we're passing it another parameter of inches, okay? So we got our box D reference variable equal to new, new keyword here, the new will return a reference of the box object type, all right? To the assignment operator, which then I'll assign it to the reference variable D. And then we'll display the volume, the string literal here, plus the calculate volume method, plus this little string literal uh, cubic, plus um, the get unit of measurement, whatever it returns back from that, that method there. So you're looking at this and you may be thinking, okay, how does this work, right? And so the way, the way this works is Java, Java looks at the method signature, or the, um, not the method signature, sorry. That's gonna be the next tutorial, by the way. Um, looks at the constructor signature here and says, okay, I know that this one has no parameters. There must be a constructor inside of this class here that has no parameters. And that's how I know what code block to execute. It says, okay, here in this particular um, constructor, we have three integer parameters and that's it. We must have one that that's, has the same signature and sure enough we have there. So that tells it when it initializes the object to go ahead and run all the code that's inside of this code block for this constructor, right? And then in the final one here, it says, okay, I've got um, an argument here of int type, another argument, another argument, and then I've got a string literal here. So I better have a constructor inside of the box class that ha that matches that. And sure enough, it comes down here and says, okay, I'm going to run this. I'm gonna execute these statements when I create the, the object here, right? Okay, so let's just go ahead and save this out. Pop back up to our DOS prompt here. Type in Java C constructor overloading.java. Then we'll run it there. Okay, so let's move this down just a little bit here. So the volume of box B is 100. We fully expected that there. Volume of box C, nothing new there. The volume of box D is 210 cubic inches. Okay, so I was basically all able to um, create a new instance variable and allow greater functionality of the box class without breaking any existing versions that may have been in use out there, right? So I'm going to go ahead and pull over my final thoughts here on this one here and just read it in verbatim. So let's consider what we'd have to do if Java did not allow constructor overloading. We couldn't simply modify the existing class because that would break any code that was using the box object already. We would have to create an entirely new object or new class with different name that would contain 80% duplicate code. The new class would have the constructor with the length, width, and height plus the uh, string unit of measurement parameter. Now we would have two classes that performed almost identical operations. That is not good. Now when I create a new class, I fully realize the class will most likely evolve over time. The ability to overload a constructor allows us to seamlessly expand our classes without breaking code that is already in use. All right. So hopefully that, uh, that makes complete sense there. I'm gonna go ahead and close out of this, close out of that. And that concludes this tutorial. Thanks for watching.